Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used Samsung Galaxy, iPhone, and other smartphones are worth at gazelle.com. And by Stash, an Atlassian product. Stash offers behind the firewall Git management for your source code. Secure, fast, and enterprise grade. To learn more about Stash and try it free for 30 days, visit atlassian.com slash twit. And by 99designs, the world's largest online graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of over 200,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash AAA to receive a free design consultation. That's 99designs.com slash AAA. Hello, and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 118, recorded on Tuesday, July 16th, 2013. We are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Gina Trapani. Yes, you are. It's good to be back with you, Gina. Good to be here. Missing Ron this yep. week. Gon Richards did not uh, appear today. He's at a Comic-Con, so maybe he's Comic-Con Richards. Oh, man, I'm going to stop rhyming. This is just getting weird. Uh, yes, acceptable but excuse. He's, he Comic says... Comic-Con is an acceptable excuse. Yeah, he's yeah, down totally. For me. I mean, it's it's fun to rhyme his name and, you know, you know make fun of his name that way um, because he's not here to defend himself. So uh, <laughs> exactly. we kid because we love. Uh, but he will be back next week. But this week, we are stoked to bring back Brady Forrest, uh, VP of Highway 1.io, which is a hardware incubator. I feel like the last time we had you on, Brady, you were with a different company. What's going on? What is... Uh, what is highway one.io all about i was i was i was with uh, coastal adventures that's right but last fall i got lured away to start up a hardware incubator here in san francisco and so basically i thought it'd be really interesting to find hardware startups help them figure out their manufacturing process and then take them to china so that's what i'm going to be doing the first quest starts in the fall Oh, sounds sounds very exciting. Super cool to have you back, uh, lending your your Android uh, expertise to the show. Um, we've got a lot to talk about this week. Obviously, uh, there's been a lot of interesting kind of developments in the Android world. The new Play Store redesign finally dropped. That was teased at, at I.O. The new trend in device upgrade plans, which is maybe fringe as far as Android news specifically is concerned, but it definitely applies to a lot of people potentially, so that'll be a good discussion. More on the Moto X, a redesigned Maps app that was also long overdue and teased at I.O., plus so much more. Lots of things that we've been waiting for that finally kind of hit, and a few that we're still waiting for. Uh, but let's not, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the news. Google has finally rolled out its mega Play Store redesign to the web. This is the design that matches the Play Store on mobile. Uh, it looks pretty pretty different, really beautiful, but also really different. Uh, the first time you go to it, if, if you're like me, you'll go there and you'll just stare at it and go, wait, 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 yeah. where did all my stuff go? Mm. Where did my stuff go? Um, the My Apps Area list uh, combines all the apps you've ever installed on all your devices into one giant list, which is handy. There's no more uninstall option, um, no more isolating apps to protect Particular devices. Uh, there's wish lists or featured, so you can add apps to wish lists really easily. Um, app listing, the, the individual app listing pages are pretty different too. Permissions appear when, only when you click to install. The um, the what's new list is right front and center there. Um, there's no 30-day, uh, th no more 30-day install graph, although at the bottom of the page you can see how many installs there are, just the numbers. Uh, the review area kind of changed a whole lot too. Now you, can, you can't select reviews for a particular device or a star rating, Ouch. and search, func search functionality is a little limited. Of course, <laughs> you know, for the, the Android faithful, of course, picked apart the, the redesign, uh, listing all the things that were missing. But overall, it's really quite a beautiful redesign. It's got that Google Now-ish kind of card layout. It's got kind of fancy, nice transitions, and, you know, you expand the reviews and page through them really nicely. The, the app um, screenshots are 
are featured. They're very, very big and they yeah, just go far to the right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, big and bold. The app icons are big and gorgeous. Uh, I actually, I quite, I quite liked it. Of course, I went to my my apps page and I kind of stared at it and was like, "Where's my graph?" What you know, my eyes were trained to look in those areas mm -hmm. uh, that you're used to looking at, but. But after spending some time with it, I really, really, really quite like it. The reviews area, I wish was, you know, I wish that certain things were a little more obvious. I'm sure they're going to iterate as they go along, but I'm, I'm digging it. One thing that I did notice when I clicked on install on an app is that my is that Google Glass was listed as one of the mm -hmm. uh, destination devices. Of course, none of the apps that I tried to install were actually compatible with Glass. But that was kind of interesting. So it looks like it looks like, and this seemed pretty obvious that Glass will be showing up in the Play Store. You'll be able to install Glass Glassware from the Play Store, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, what do you think when you when you looked at this, Jason? When you looked at the redesign? Uh, I I really like it. Uh, I think you know it's it's what Google promised, which was to kind of unify the the look and feel of what you get on a device now. Because I mean, definitely a while back when that uh, that was refreshed. It became the the good place to go for, for many reasons, as far as kind of a beautiful kind of you know as 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 you see right here, big and bold icons mm -hmm. that really kind of pull you in and, and invite you to click and install and everything like that. It does seem like they've they've trimmed down the fat, which Google seems to be doing a lot with uh, these big redesigns these days, and that's going to upset a lot of people. One of the things that I think is is kind of limited right now is the search search functionality which is kind of strange for a google product uh no more en endless search results i think they stop at 48 no more filtering down to things like relevancy and popularity i think those are kind of important tools when you're talking about really digging deep into an app store that's filled with hundreds of thousands of apps and truly finding the kind of gems that are hidden in, in there uh having powerful search tools i think is important so i really hope that they 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 build that up again and make you know kind of bring that back. But overall, yeah. I like it. I think the presentation of it is is excellent and uh, just bigger and bolder. I I think they did a good job. Did you get a chance to play around with it much, Brady? A little bit. I like the fact that they're starting to unify around the play and bring all the different pieces of hardware in there. And as the occasional glass user, I like the idea that I could shop there as opposed to on my plate on my glass device. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's such a detached experience if you have glass trying to, uh, you know, to to bring apps, you know, the glassware as they say, uh, into it. It makes perfect sense that it would be here. It, it uh, glass appeared in my list of devices as well, but I haven't been able to find any apps that it, you know you could actually install to glass from the Play Store yet. So obviously that functionality isn't entirely there yet, but they're moving in that direction. It makes perfect sense. But. Yeah, one thing one thing I noticed just as a developer who's not a very good designer and had to hire a designer to help me with just putting together sort of image assets, um, when you go to an individual app page, there used to be that big promo graphic header uh, mm -hmm. that, that that was at the top of the page, and now it's just the icon that's at the top of the page, and then they're and they're, and then they're uh, emphasizing the screenshots a lot more, and I love that not only because it costs me less <laughs> to hire a designer and think, well, what would this giant promo graphic look like? Um, it can it can it makes me want to funnel my resources into making a really great icon that's high resolution extra high resolution yes and then Good focus point. on what the, the the interface of my app looks like versus some fancy hand wavy you know promo graphic with with, with fancy graphics yeah that's that's a really good point at that kind of uh nudging developers in the direction of improving the uh the definition of of those yeah. icons because it doesn't it suck so much when you install an app and then you end up seeing the icon and it's all blurry compared to everything else it makes yes. it makes me want to uninstall it immediately because i'm like well if you aren't paying attention to that you probably aren't paying attention to other other qualities of your app as well Absolutely. what were you gonna say brady oh uh, you know i was just thinking and i didn't actually test this out but it'd be pretty cool if over time when you install one app it actually installed across all the hardware devices so that automatically glass would be loaded with all the course with all my corresponding android apps and mm -hmm. i don't have to worry about keeping them all in sync and man managing all my accounts kind of like what what happens with chrome right now oh so like it doesn't matter what chrome uh what chrome computer yeah. or, or wherever you are or once browser. you log in under your under your account they're all synced Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be interesting. The problem there could be that you don't want the same things on a tablet that you might on your glass or, or you know, on your phone or versus on your tablet. But that would be interesting. So uh, just uh, along these lines, but I'm, I'm just curious, do you guys keep the auto backup on when you get a new device? Do you let yeah. Play manage mm -hmm. the install of all those apps? For some reason, yep. you yeah, don't. Yeah. 
For some reason, that bugs me. I'm not sure why. It shouldn't. Maybe because it's because you don't want the app, same apps across devices, or no, because you want to install yourself, or I, yeah, you know, that's a really good question. Actually, now that I think about it, it's probably because being in the root world. I manage my backups manually versus doing it through the Play Store. And I've, I've, that's exactly what it is. All right. Yeah. I probably shouldn't yeah. even open my mouth. I just answer my own question. But, <laughs> um, but, but I end up seeing that. And for some reason, it annoys me. I'm like, don't do that. I'll do it myself. That's exactly it. I'm, I'm doing it myself through uh, Titanium Backup. So, I mean, they, they I, I just button. remember uh, the first ahead, time Brady. I heard about like the auto backup feature was a Google exec handed over uh, his phone to one of my O'Reilly colleagues. It's like, here, just take it. I'll get a new one tomorrow, and it'll be exactly the way I want it. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. That was about two or three years ago. Yeah. That's yeah, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty powerful. That wasn't quite my experience when I set up the one. There were just a ton of apps that I had to log. It was just the logging in part. It was just like, oh, like I got to mm -hmm. look up my, you know, look up. And, and just customizing, like, widgets and, and the home screen and stuff. Although maybe there's a way to back that up, and I turn... I turn that off, so maybe maybe I'll be pre I'll be pretty wrong. I like that you know all my apps Adam automatically got pushed down mm -hmm. as soon as I signed in on the one, but I still felt like I had to do some work to get it to the way that you know I, that, that I want you know my home screen the way that I wanted it to be. Back yeah. to Brady's point about like installing across your devices, it's interesting. Like in the Play Store, they could have a but have a choice in the in, you know in the install button. The choice could be you know install on all my compatible devices, um, mm -hmm. which you know doesn't seem like it would be that that unreasonable. Sure. Um, but uh, but but I have in a lot of cases I have incompatible devices like Google TV is rarely lit up right Glass is not lit up um, you know older I actually haven't had I have an older like Ting phone that that sometimes isn't compatible so so it, you know you can't get all your apps across all your devices just, just due to compatibility issues but it would be inter interesting to have just install everywhere you can mm -hmm. uh, as even maybe the, def the default. Yeah, yeah, I, I just feel like Google is just beginning with this ecosystem, and so that's what that's the way they're starting to think is that you'll have a Google TV, you'll have your Android, you'll have your Chromebook, and I want Evernote across all of them. And hopefully, maybe they get to the place where user tokens are assigned, so the apps auto authenticate you. Yeah, Evernote's a yeah. perfect example of something like that. That Twitter yeah. apps, all that kind of stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that was one of the main themes of I/O too. Like this is a yeah. multi-device, multi-screen world where syncing notifications across your devices. You should be able to. Now, if they merge the Chrome Web Store and the Play Store, that would be something. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's the, the the Chrome Android divide. They're still really sticking to those two two separate paths. I could see oh, that I happen. think I think that's going to change over time. Yeah, I think, I, I, I definitely agree. think that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. can see that happening for sure. Uh, well, so this isn't as much Android news, but I think I thought it was kind of an interesting discussion. And when I started kind of breaking it apart to try and describe it on the show, I realized just how complicated it kind of is. So bear with me here. I'm not going to get into too much of the details. But T-Mobile, AT&T, and likely Verizon, there's a leak I'll talk about in a second, are all launching new upgrade plans for folks who want to upgrade devices faster than every two years. In all cases, you'd have to pay an additional monthly fee to take part and trade in your device when you trade up for another one. Um, so first, first off, we heard from T-Mobile. They have the Jump program that they announced, and just from a, a you know from a broad spectrum here, T-Mobile doesn't include subsidized pricing in their monthly plan, their monthly fee uh, plan fee. So you're not also paying for the subsidy there. You upgrade phones up to twice a year with device trade-ins, ten dollar a month fee that includes insurance. T-Mobile doesn't charge your subsidy price in that service, as I said, along with plan pricing. AT&T and presumably Verizon, because they had a leaked plan that kind of hit the internet over the weekend, uh, both do. Essentially, what that means is you'd be paying twice for your hardware for the privilege of being able uh, to trade it in. Not twice the amount, but two times the fees for your hardware. So AT&T Next, which AT&T officially announced, Say that you pay a monthly fee to be able to upgrade your phone every year one time with no down payment. New device uh, with no down payment upgrade or activation fees. But Nilay Patel at The Verge really made a good case uh, kind of illustrating why these things aren't necessarily the smartest choice in the world regarding AT&T Next. So uh, bear with me here. $20 subsidy for the S4, let's say, uh, per month. That's built into your service cost, right? So the service fee that you pay anyways has 20-ish dollars built into that per month that you're paying as a subsidized price. Uh, that equals $240 per year plus $384 pay, uh, payments 
for the phone. So the phone that you're actually getting for that year before you trade up. That's $620, which is the full retail cost of the S4. But at the end of that, you don't get to keep the S4. You trade it up for another device as, you know, at the end of that year, and you start the whole fun process over again. If you choose to pay to keep that phone, uh, you end up paying over the course of the, you know, the time with the device, $1,040. That's assuming $640 in next payments and $400 in subsidies. AT&T keeps a smooth $420 for your privilege to, to do this next plan for a year and then decide that you actually want to keep the device. Uh, so I ask you, is this a good plan for consumers? Does this make any sense? Would anybody... People are going to do this because it's kind of enticing. Uh, what do you think about this, Brady? Does any of this sound appealing to you? <laughs> it, it sounds like a scary leasing option. It I totally don't really, I, I didn't totally get it from your description, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's like complicated. It. it is definitely like complicated. Even, yeah. <laughs> Neelai subhead is no, 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 period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about the AT&T plan is, you know, look, they're betting that people that want to do this have lots of disposable income and are just willing to pay a premium to have I mean, people who want a new phone every year, every two years are going to pay the extra money. I mean, look, I, you know, I have a T-Mobile uh, plan, the pay as you go 30 bucks a month thing. And I buy my phones kind of unlocked and, you know, full price unsubsidized. And I do that mostly because, you know, I'm a developer and sometimes I get to test devices to, to test out and I need my stuff unlocked. And so I could just pop a SIM right, in right. and go. And when I got the HD C1, I, I realized that it had a micro SIM a SIM slot and I had a, a regular size SIM. So I had to go to the T-Mobile store and they were like, well, we'll cut it down. And I was like, no, I want a real. So I had to switch it over. But I pay a premium for that just so that I can kind of switch switch phones very easily. Uh, so, you know, people are going to do this for sure. But it is really kind of a ripoff. It seems like this is an area that we're just, there's so much potential for innovation. You know, I think mm -hmm. that, that, that instead of screwing over consumers, there's a way to do this. Uh, where people can have the, the latest stuff without paying through the nose. Um, this it kind of sucks that this isn't it. Yeah, I know. It, of the th of the three, and Verizon sounds uh, pretty similar to you know, and mind you, it's a leaked document that hit, so it's not official yet. But the Verizon plan sounds very similar to the AT and T next. Sounds like of the three, the T Mobile one would be the way to go if you really had to do this kind of service. In all cases, it doesn't sound like necessarily the smartest thing in the world. But when I did first hear about it, when T-Mobile was making their announcement, I was very intrigued by it. And I was like, well, maybe this kind of applies to me because I always find myself at a year, year and a half, like hating my phone, wanting a new one and having to wait an extra six to eight months before I can actually finally get one. Uh, right. Turns out it doesn't doesn't seem like it's very very smart. Not that great <laughs> well, not not to be plugging your sponsor, but couldn't like what's the economics of selling it on Gazelle or iCracked or yeah, one I of mean those that's, that's a really good point. I think the economics would probably work out a little bit better in that case because you're selling a device that you own outright, getting cash for that, and then being able to place it however you want into you know into whatever plan or you know if you decide to buy into a subsidy that that could potentially pay for the subsidy subsidization or the device cost, you know, $200 or whatever, right off the top versus this. I mean, in, in all cases in this, you know, as far as these services are concerned, you're paying, like you say, to lease it and you don't get to keep it at the end. You're trading it in at the end and you might pay just as much as you would have if you'd just done what you've always done before. Uh, the only difference is you don't get to keep it. So, right. so very interesting anyways. I, I I thought, I thought it would be an interesting uh, topic just because it's new and so confusing, so freaking confusing. But uh, definitely do your research if you're thinking about hopping into one of these things. And at first glance, it sounds good. Yes, like exactly. New phone, you know, yeah, new phone without being locked in. I can I upgrade more easily without getting locked in. But do your research, yep. folks. Because the folks who would do this are the people who are watching the show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Device. Yep. 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 Uh, so let's talk about cord cutting, cable cord cutting. The mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal is reporting that Google has entered into discussions with media companies to devise an internet TV streaming service providing cable TV style programming. It's rumored to offer a TV experience similar to cable, but through the internet, allowing customers to do things like flip through channels. Uh, Intel and Sony are both working on similar services. And of course, there's always rumors that Apple uh, is working on something along the lines of TV as well. 
I'm, I would love to see this happen. I mean, two, was it two or three years after Google TV was announced at Google IO? Like, I feel like the, the, the dream of really good Google TV now, let's, let's differentiate between the hardware versus the service. Uh, it's kind of died. It didn't feel it's, like Google was really committed to Google TV because the, yeah. the, the, the Google TV hardware didn't go well at all. And in fact, Google's negotiations with these companies went so badly that, you know, you had things like ABC.com blocked on Google TV. You couldn't even watch, you know, the shows on the web page, right? Because they were detecting Google TV and blocking it. Uh, so I don't have a lot of hope and faith, but apparently Google is showing off this product um, in demos and they've, they've, they've come pretty far along. So it sounds like this might be a, another potential option for folks to say, hey, you know, I don't need cable TV service. I'm just going to stream over the internet. Yeah, if they're if they're able to reach those deals with the you know the the entities that they need to do, I have no doubt that Apple's exactly. cracked this nut in in many mm -hmm. ways as well. Uh, I'm sure they have the ability to create great services and hardware or and software solutions for these kind of things. It all seems to boil down to can you convince the others that they should do this. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm right there with you, Gina. I would love to see something like this happen. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to see it anytime soon, because it just doesn't seem like, I mean, it doesn't matter how big these guys are. Like, it doesn't seem like they yeah. can make this negotiation. It's just not happening, know. yet we keep hearing about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I mean, a lot of these services really come down to exclusive content. So are they going to try and start filming their own Google series, like Arrested Development, House of Cards, okay. and, you know, follow Netflix and HBO down that road? Yeah, they have the... Uh, what is it, the YouTube Space LA, all the different space places, up, upping their production capabilities significantly. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe they could do that. That would actually be uh, pretty cool to follow along with. <laughs> YouTube well, that's TV. What, I mean, that's what yeah. Microsoft is doing with uh, the Xbox studios in LA, Vancouver, and I forget where else. Mm -hmm. uh, they are investing billions of dollars in TV experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope that they're able to do it. it, it yeah, it is. It is interesting to see kind of how Google has handled Google TV, uh, particularly to this point. The last two IOs have been kind of totally, pretty much for all intents and purposes, hands off on Google TV, minus a talk or two here and there, which doesn't really tell you that they're they're they have a whole lot of faith in it if they're not giving it that much attention. I keep waiting for them to like have this renewed faith and like you know what we're. We're doubling down on it. These are all the things that we're doing, and they just seem limited. Maybe this is one way to spark that again. I don't know. Well, after yes. that inaugural demo with the switching the box routine, they'll, I don't think they'll ever put it on the main stage again. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That was sort no, of a disastrous demo, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody, please turn off your Bluetooth. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. When it, when it comes down to the people in the audience turning off their, their own services, then you know you're in trouble. <laughs> Um, Sandman in the chat room asked if this is the same as what Google's doing in Kansas. And this is this is different than what's going on in Kansas right now. Google's providing TV to customers through Google Fiber in Kansas, but this is they're they're providing like traditional cable packages in Kansas right now. This is a a, a new thing, a right. new internet only thing. Right. Uh, let's take a quick email here. Uh, fan of the show, Jacqueline Nehama, who's very active on Google Plus, actually. I've seen a lot of her posts uh, in the community. Uh, there says, thanks for the great show. One of the discussions caught my attention. I thought the following could be helpful in both speeding things up and adding to the phone's customization or custom customizability. There we go. On many of the third-party launchers that mimic stock, Apex, Nova, Holo, uh, you can assign a gesture to trigger home search or Google search, uh, either written or voice. I have it set that long press home key triggers search. For those who want to limit search to a browser, as we were talking last week, you can assign it to trigger your browser of choice. It only saves a sec. It only saves a second or two, but as a heavy user of search on my Android device, it definitely makes a difference. So for those people who have to search within the browser, but still want to use kind of the Google Now kind of entryway into it, you can do it that way. Uh, it says two, I love the gesture assignment for search and other apps because I like a clean look to my home screen. So I don't like the fixed search bar. A lot of people don't like that fixed search bar. Uh, although I have root access, you don't need it to remove the bar. The same launchers allow you to choose when you have the bar fixed to your home screen, never, always, or landscape only. Features like this make me love the Android OS. Keep up the great work. Uh, so I just thought that was an interesting kind of addendum to, to last week's discussion and our preferences on how we search our device because it really does seem everybody wants, you know, everybody thinks of search on their device to do different things. Some just want it in the browser, some want it full device. Now it's up to you. There you go.
<laughs> and I, I love that moment when Ron was like, oh, yeah, that search bar is there at the top yeah. of my home screen. It's like he blocked it. It's like, <laughs> like he blocked it out like a banner ad, like never. <laughs> I know. It kind of blew me away. I was like, really? That was great. So I great. I see that thing there all the time. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks for emailing. Anyone can email us. We we ask that we, we love getting your emails. AAA at twit.tv. Send them our way. We'll put them into the show. Uh, let's take a quick break and thank one of our sponsors of today's episode, Gazelle. We love Gazelle. Uh, and we were kind of talking about them a little bit earlier in the show. If you want the new Samsung Galaxy S4, maybe you plan to buy the HTC One like Gina did, and we'll talk to her about that in a little bit, or any other Android phone. Uh, before you upgrade, make sure and sell your used smartphone and uh, get get cash for it from Gazelle. Get, Gazelle pays out just hard cash for your devices that are just gathering dust, dust sitting around not being used. Go to G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com and you can find your item. It's a really easy interface. You just you just find the picture, uh, navigate to, you know, the, the maker of your of your device, find the picture of your device, select it, uh, which, you know, which model is it specifically, what carrier, how you know what are what are the storage options? They just it's a really easy step by step. They ask you the condition, you tell them the condition, and they give you a price. That price is locked for 30 days. So in other words, you could go on there right now because devices don't you know <laughs> don't gain value over time. They lose value over time. You go in right now and lock the price. You have 30 days to actually submit that device and claim at that cost. Uh, really handy around times of new device announcements when you think that you might possibly you know, be uh, wanting to upgrade to the new Samsung offering and you know that they're about to make an announcement, what better time than now to lock the price in and then you get that price for it uh, after the announcement when everyone else decides they want to try and do it. Uh, you get paid fast by check, PayPal, or you get an extra 5% with an Amazon gift card. They lock it in for 30 days. Uh, they're now buying back a larger selection of tablets, actually, in addition to the iPad. You can now sell to Gazelle Samsung, Google Nexus, Kindle Fire, Surface, Asus tablets. They've just got a number of new tablet offerings. Uh, so if you have a, a tablet from any of these makers or more, just go ahead and check it out. They're probably in there, and you can get paid, as I said, in cash. Uh, payment is fast within a few days of the item being received, and it's risk-free. Uh, they will also actually wipe your device, wipe the data from your device for free uh, if you don't do it yourself. It's trustworthy. Gazelle has actually paid $100 million uh, to over 500,000 customers. Very easy and free shipping as well. So take a look. There's just a ton of devices in there. You probably have one that you can sell back to Gazelle to get ready for your new, your new smartphone purchase. What is your iPhone, your Samsung, your other Android smartphone worth? Find out. Take a minute. Go to gazelle.com. And we thank Gazelle for their sponsorship of All About Android and the Twit Network. You guys are great. All right. Speaking of hardware, let's jump right in and talk more hardware. Moto X. Oh, this thing just doesn't go away, does it? It's not even what? announced yet. It doesn't I know, go away. What is it? Let's talk about Moto X. So, <laughs> so first, uh, last week, I think it was on Wednesday afternoon. It was after Twig last week. Leo was invited to an event over at Motorola slash Google, and he's he's under an embargo to some you know date that we don't even know. And I on Twig, I was asking him pretty <laughs> straightforward to please email me and let me know what he found out oh, at this event did because he? apparently that that wouldn't violate the embargo, mm -hmm. but much to my surprise and to Leo's credit, he did really did not share <laughs> any <laughs> information with, with us, with, with Jeff and I uh -huh. about the event. Uh, but there were quite a few, quite a few leaks this weekend. Jason, I'm going to have you uh, help me out with this. So, yeah. okay. So we've got, <laughs> let's, let's run down the leaks. The first leak that I saw was the Rogers wireless uh, video, which it was a promo video for Moto X, which has since been pulled. So uh, Chad, we have in the, in the rundown here, there's a video. I, I tried to play it. It says this video is uh, private. Oh. It looks like that the, the blog said that Rogers asked them to pull it. But it pretty much showed someone using the Moto X on Rogers uh, and a cu couple of couple of features that it had, always listening for voice commands. So you'd say, hello, Google Now, and it would search for you. It would perform actions for you. Uh, active updates would replace the LED light with screen info notifications. Uh, you tilt your hand to launch the camera. You tap anywhere to snap, hold 
or burst uh, burst shots. Um, and so, okay, so there was the Roger Wireless uh, video, which was mm -hmm. a pretty big leak. And yeah, that was pretty big one. You have to imagine someone got in big trouble for that one. I felt, I felt bad when I watched that one. I was like, wow, we are clearly too. not supposed like, to see not this. Not supposed to see this right now. Yeah, it's, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then we've got pictures of Eric Schmidt uh, very happily making phone calls and tapping away at what looked to be the Moto X uh, at the Allen and Conference in Sun, Vi Sun Valley, Idaho. Lots of photos there. It looks, uh, I don't know, kind of what you think it would look like. It, it looks like a thin, modern, kind of nicely designed uh, triangle. Looks like looks like a new smartphone, right? That, that one uh, picture like that you just white. yeah, the one picture you just showed, Chad, the one above that one. Yeah, that kind of looks like uh, the Mighty Mouse. For, for oh, Mac. It does. <laughs> Apple, the Apple Mouse, it's true. <laughs> kind of does. <laughs> kind of does. It has that like yeah. that shape of the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, no, no, that's okay. It's a, that's a good point. So lots of photos there. We have a we have the headphone jack at the top and the center, um, which of mouse. course all Magic the Android mouse. blogs were like, blah, <laughs> fail. Uh, I don't mind the headphone jack at the top and the center. No. Uh, but Eric, yeah, happily using the Moto X there. And then um, Motorola tweeted out a little tease for the Moto X, a, a couple of pictures of a little kid running around, super blurry, uh, said something about either this kid is really fast or today's phones are really slow. So clearly a teaser for fast camera, for clear photos. And then our friend uh, Brian Klug of Anon Tech posted a bunch of screenshots to Twitter with insight into specs and sensors. Uh, he confirmed that we had got a 4.7 inch HD 720p display, 1.7 gigahertz dual core, core Snapdragon uh, processor, two gigabyte RAM, 16 gigabytes internal storage with about 12 gig usable, no micro SD slot, Android 4.2.2. And we're looking at August as likely released. I'm, I'm gonna try and twist Leo's arm as much as possible tomorrow twig i don't think he's gonna break but but i'm gonna i'm gonna try and find out what he knew what he knew um, <laughs> i doubt he's gonna he break on the show that's i'll I'm tell sure you that he, much right now he probably won't break on the show but uh <laughs> Snowball was also at that event that leah was at yeah. and he had google glass on ironically and had filmed that's actually right. quite a bit and there was i guess there was a musical guest and he posted a couple of videos to his google plus stream you could actually see leo in them and yeah. uh there was a motorola exec clearly holding the moto x yeah so yeah this is the phone you're gonna know everything about before the big reveal i know did yeah. i miss anything it's a beautiful shape yeah, it is i like it i like the art art kind of quality to it uh, i was interested it was interesting to find uh, Brian mentioned 4.7 inch screen. I thought that up until now we were kind of hearing more murmurs around 4.4 instead of 4.7. It's a small difference, but it could mean a, a big difference to a lot of people because some people feel like the 4.4 is just too small. And the 4.7, I believe, is what I have here in the Galaxy Nexus. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of great. Uh, yeah, it so sounds interesting. Other people are getting hung up on the dual core aspect of this. I don't think it's really going to be that big a deal, to be honest. 1.7 gigahertz dual core and the S4 Pro, uh, oh, pretty the solid. Video. Oh, there we go. There we go. Nice going, Chad. Do we have, uh, do we have audio, audio on that one? And it learns your voice. With the power of Google Now, it tells you what you need to know, even Hopefully when you're not touching the screen. Hopefully this doesn't get us for some reason. Okay, Google Now, what's the forecast for today? Forecast for Toronto is 25 degrees with a thunderstorm. Now she did that all hands free. Her hands were on the keyboard, you know, at the, at the computer, typing away, and she just kind of glanced down and said that. So always, always on and always listening. Uh, I have to imagine if they're doing that, they've they've worked out something that's going to make this battery efficient. I have to hope, anyways. And it's Motorola. They have a history of kind of paying attention and, and appreciating the fact that battery is a really important component in devices. Instead so, of a blinking light that yeah, doesn't actually tell you intrigued. anything, information well, it's interesting to hear them centering in on the OK as the, com as the voice command. Yeah, right. And I hope yeah. they figure out some one-syllable word instead of three syllables for that, because OK Glass isn't that bad. OK Google Now? Yeah, I mean... Yeah. That's, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, why not just OK Google? Or OK, Google. OK Now. Yeah. Okay now. Yeah. yeah. Okay go. Okay now. Okay go. Okay, go. <laughs> Excellent. We've got, yes, and I, I can see the advertisement for it already. It's practically playing in my in my brain. Uh, yeah. So interesting stuff. I'm I'm certainly looking forward to the official announcement. It feels like we're right on the cusp of it. Just with the rapid pace of these leaks and the event and yeah. everything, I, we're going to hear something official very soon. I have to imagine. Absolutely.
Um, well, okay, so this is kind of interesting in light of that, I think, is the fact that we've also talked about other Motorola news and hardware in the last few weeks. Verizon Wireless just sent an invite for a press event uh, for July 23rd, New York City. They say they will unveil the next generation of one of its of one of their most popular family of devices, obviously addressing the Droid family, which it's kind of been a while since they released a Droid in the family. Uh, pics have uh, pictures have leaked of the device family. Uh, fam I keep talking about family with these devices, but there you go. There's a uh, yeah. There's there's the kids and and mom and dad, or there's mom and dad and their kid. I don't know. Um, so, and then finally, the ad teases, there's a, there's a leaked ad that leaked, uh, that teases the Droid Max having 48 hours of worry-free battery life. So, talk about doubling down on wow. battery efficiency. That's 48 just- 48 hours. If That's that, impressive. I, I, yeah, I have to, I have to wonder how real world that is. Uh, Not with always on Google now, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if any of this rolls over to, you know, from the X into the Max. But I guess what I get confused with is we're obviously looking at old guard Motorola and new guard Motorola, and they seem to be lining up to about the same time. Is that confusing? Like, it, it, should there be a reason to be concerned about that if Google is trying to paint Motorola as kind of stepping into the next generation of their devices? Maybe, maybe the droid's got a really, I mean, the droid is a big name, right? I mean, it yeah. feels like, I, th I think for a long time, regular consumers sort of conflated Android and droid just because the names sound similar, but, and, but you know, the droid was, was kind of the Android phone. I wonder if they're going to retire, retire this line, uh, yeah. or are they competing against each other? I feel like the droid line has this like kind of very specific kind of look and feel and target. And I'm, I'm actually kind of, I'm hoping that the Moto X marketing in particular is going to be maybe a little less uh dystopian uh, robots yeah, killing totally, one another totally. you know mm -hmm. um but i don't know it, it, it you know i don't know part of me is like hey you know the more the merrier in terms of devices but you're right there could be splitting the audience they could be creating more confusion but you know google might say that's just creating more choice yeah absolutely and then and then on one hand they're offering for the the, the motorola you know people who love the old guard of motorola they're offering them the devices with you know, a little bit of that blur influence, although they've kind of peeled that back over the last year. But, you know, more of that blur influence. And then on the other side, well, you want something that's a little bit more true to, you know, for for Android fans uh, at, their, at the core, then we have the Moto X, and that offers something completely different. So there's something for everybody. And that technology from the Moto X will definitely trickle down into the lower-end yeah. phones over time. Yeah. I mean, that is, it makes sense to hit both ends of the market. Sure. Yeah, it would be curious to see if they continue to do that. Will there continue to be Maxes or Razors for, the, for that matter? I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, so, Gina, speaking of new phones, you got a new phone. I did. There. My HTC One, my Google Edition <laughs> HTC One showed up. I'm really, really happy about it. That's my kid on my home screen there. <laughs> Very um, nice. Very really nice. happy. I, I got it. Uh, I got it on Friday. It shipped last Tuesday. It arrived on Friday. I spent the weekend sort of, you know, caressing it and and installing all my things. Uh, I mean, I upgraded from the Galaxy Nexus, which I've had for I don't know a year and a half maybe. Which you know, I just beat the hell out of my phones. I mean, not only do I take them with me everywhere, but I install you know three to four apps a week, even just for this show to do my mm -hmm. arena. Pick. Uh, so my phone just takes a beating and that Galaxy Nexus, as you know, Jason, it was just slow. It was just slow, slow, slow. And I was, you know, trying to clean, constantly cleaning up and trying to speed things up and doing, you know, tweaks for Google now to be more responsive. This phone just feels in comparison to the Galaxy Nexus is so fast, uh, feels so clean, things are just very, very, very responsive. The screen, even though it's about the same as the, as the Galaxy Nexus, like the height, the screen, there's just less, there's less like uh, bezel. So the screen is actually taller. So on my app, I, I make a to-do list, you know, like I can see a whole other to-do item at the bottom of my app oh, uh, than I can on the Galaxy Nexus, which is great. I really love the uh, the speakers on the front. That's mm -hmm. a big deal for me. I listen to podcasts on my phone sometimes, uh, like when uh, sometimes just without headphones, just kind of the phone out listening to Pocket Casts. And I like that I can set the phone down so I can see the screen, but also hear the podcast because mm -hmm. the speakers are on the front. I, I do. I watch a lot of uh, a lot of YouTube. Camera is way better than Galaxy Nexus. I mean, for me, it was just, it was a big upgrade. I really love it. I feel like for the next two weeks, I'm in that sweet spot of having one of the best Android phones. Uh, don't you love that? There. Oh, yes. That, that rare <laughs> air, that like two weeks. It's you like, have. it's sure. like 
new car smell after you get you get a brand new car and for months you're just like that's the smell that i just bought a new car like, and it's like mine a boss. Yeah, brand exactly. new i've got the new thing of course when the moto x comes out i will no longer have the new thing and I, i'm actually i'm okay with that yeah. um i thought the buttons were going to bother me a lot more that there's the home the, the, the you know the hcc logos in the middle here and the home buttons to the side and and there's no uh recent apps button you kind of double tap or, or tap and hold I got over that pretty quickly. It wasn't wasn't not a big deal. Um, I, it's the Google edition, so I'm running just st straight, plain, vanilla Android. I do. It's totally unlocked. I do plan to. Uh, Leo is showing me TrickDroid, TrickDroid.org, where you can kind of dual boot HTC Sense and mm -hmm. uh, and the Google edition, so I get the Beats audio controller, software controller, and, and maybe some of the HTC uh, camera apps. I haven't done that yet, but yeah, I've been really I've been really digging it. Yeah, and anytime you have the option to dual boot. You might as well yeah. do it. Like, why yeah, not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Exactly. Yeah. I try not to fetishize these things too much because I feel like these are just objects and they're here to, like, make our lives easier, not for us to sort of worship and spend time configuring. I mean, that, I really kind of struggle with that. Yep. Uh, with that, with Android, especially because it's so configurable because you can spend so much time customizing it. And so oh. I try not to indulge in that too much. But when you get a brand new phone, you have to have at least a week or two oh, of totally. just kind of, kind of in, being in love, which I am. So Absolutely. Oh, right on. Awesome. Well, I'm happy that you're enjoying it. One uh, one quick question. Camera. Have you been pretty happy with what you've seen coming from the camera? Re yeah. I mean, camera's way better, way better than the, the Galaxy Nexus. So that was a big, that was a big upgrade. Um, yeah. uh, in fact, I should, I'll post some pictures. In fact, I've been meaning to do side by side the HTC camera and the Google edition camera. But yeah, it's big upgrade from, from the Galaxy Nexus. I've been, I've been happy with it. Uh, so, and honestly, I've been taking most of my pictures with glass when I kind of go out and about mm -hmm. inspired really by you, Jason, you know, going to events and things. I went to pride this weekend. You know, I put on glass cause it's just easier to take pictures that Absolutely. way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, digging it. I'm, I'm happy with the camera that hasn't, hasn't bugged me all right on excellent well congratulations i'm incredibly jealous because yes, <laughs> this feel my phone feels its age every time i use it what do you have brady what are you using right now oh uh, i'm still rocking my nexus 4 that i got from i know a year ago excellent nice that's, yeah that's only a year you've got another you know six months six before months. you start you know yeah, you, where you're in my boat where you're like oh god i gotta do this thing i gotta stall an app <laughs> I've been, you know, hanging out the Shenzhen uh, electronics markets lately and looking for phones there. Uh -huh. But I haven't, I haven't found anything that's really been worth uh, jumping for yet. I'm sure you see a lot of interesting selections, though. Oh yeah. In fact, I was trying to find a, a image to show you guys online, but uh, Bunny Wong, the guy who hacked the Xbox years ago, he fa he actually found a a working Apple mouse or fake Apple uh, that's also a phone. With Bluetooth. So, Whoa. you know, you can be moving your mouse around. It's got the camera in the middle of the Apple logo, and then you can pick it up and use it as a phone. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bizarre. That's a good find. This was, this was <laughs> kind of random. Like... <laughs> no kidding. That's really interesting. Wow. <laughs> well, here, I'm going to throw... Here's a blog post. I'm going to throw it in the chat room uh, about the $12 phone he found and then deconstructed. Nice. Is it? This is Bunny the the chumby guy. Yeah, Bunny the chumby yeah. guy. Bunny. Bunny the guy who hacked the Xbox most okay. specifically. Uh huh. Uh huh. Interesting. And oh yeah, no, he runs a great blog called Bunny Studios where he's he's currently trying to build a laptop. You know, people build their own, you know, like gamer uh, towers. He thinks it's time to build like a bespoke laptop. Nice. That doesn't surprise me yeah, at all. Very cool. And so this was twelve dollars retail, running Android. I'm sure, right? Uh, <laughs> no, for, for the purpose of this program, perhaps. But I don't. <laughs> who knows what it's running? Twelve dollars. Wow. But, I mean, you can find those little Android PCs yep, that are yep, more totally. powerful than Raspberry Pi. There for I mean, like fifteen bucks. I mean, the Shenzhen markets are just amazing. That's Actually, awesome. Bunny would be a great addition to your show sometime. Yeah, we should have him just, on. He would be great. Yeah, he's awesome. Excellent. I will write his name down. Uh, what? Okay. Awesome. I'll uh, I'll ask about that later. Google's telling me bunny names. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll just put bunny there, and I'll, we'll talk about it after the show. That's that's a great idea. Um, all right. So Gina, you have an email. 
We do. We have an email uh, from Dan from Minnesota. Dan says, hey, AAA crew, recently got a message from the Astrid team when I launched Astrid Tasks last week saying that they will be shutting down shop soon. Does this mean that the app will still exist but just not supported anymore? If it's going away for good, what are some similar replacement task apps? Uh, thanks. And that's from Dan in Minnesota. Dan, bad news. Astrid was purchased by Yahoo and is going is going away. I, I don't believe that the app will remain in the Play Store or get any sort of updates. In fact, I think they're taking the servers down. Uh, the You can go to blog.astrid.com and you can see their post that Astrid is, is winding down. If you spend a lot of time entering your tasks and information into Astrid, Astrid does provide an export. So you can export your data. And there are a bunch of... Um, of task replacement apps that can import your Astrid data. So you don't have to go through all the trouble of, of, of entering all your tasks and due dates and, and all that, that information again. A couple of those apps, Wonderlist, that's with a, with a U, uh, W-U-N-D, Wonderlist. Uh, Any.do, which is really popular. Mm -hmm. Tick Tick, 24 Me, uh, Sandglaze. These are all apps that Astrid actually recommended to uh, port your data over. If you haven't uh, and spent a lot of time entering your data into Astrid, if, if you just got it and you haven't been using it a whole lot, I would recommend, um, well, first, <laughs> I should say straight up, I make a task manager app that's very, very simple and stripped <laughs> down. It's plain text-based. It's to-do text, to-do.txt. And it's very, very simple. Uh, it's just a to-do list, just kind of your na next actions list. Uh, I hear from a lot of folks uh, that it doesn't have all the features that you want. So it's it's not it's not the most featureful task app that you can that you could ever find. If you want a, a task app that's more like Astrid that has features like recurring tasks and interdependent tasks and due dates and location-based reminders and, and all that, that those kind of goodies, uh, to do text isn't for you. I would check out um, I would check out any do. I would also check out there's a, a an app called Tasks if you want to sync to Google Tasks. Yeah, that's um, one that I use. Yeah. Yeah. I tasks is really, really good. And it's actually not made by Google, but it syncs to Google Tasks really well. Well, it's tablet optimized, uh, and it's really, really nice. I hear from a lot of folks who say to do text is just a little too simple for me. That they went, that they went, that they went to tasks, and and that's if uh, you're okay with re-entering all your data uh, from from Astrid, or you want to try, and, and you and you feel strongly about syncing to Google. I think that's tasks basically strongest, mm -hmm. strongest suit. So uh, yeah, sorry, sorry about Astrid, but good on them for liberating your data and letting you import it elsewhere. Absolutely, yeah. But you know, Gina, you forgot one of your top selling points. Which is that okay. you're not going to sell to Yahoo. Well, <laughs> well that's true. To-do text is never going to go away. I mean, the, the thing about to-do text is that it syncs to Dropbox. You own your data. It syncs to Dropbox. It's in your Dropbox account. I'm never going to sell to Yahoo. I'm never going to go away. Like, the app isn't ever dependent. Even if my app did go away, your to-do your to do list is still around, and you can access it from any text editor. And actually, it's an open source app, and there's this whole ecosystem of other apps, web-based, desktop-based, other mobile apps uh, that also access to-do text, and it's an open standard format. Um, so that yeah, that's that's my big selling point. I mean, basically, to-do text sells to nerds who are paranoid about just this sort of thing happening, right? Like at Yahoo buying and then it going away. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, Brady, <laughs> for pointing <laughs> that out. I appreciate that. I'm not not the best pitch person. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I, I think companies like Yahoo, if they're not going to use the service, they should open source it, like Google did with the iQ. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. And there's a bunch of other examples like that. Uh, when when Google bought the mail program, the Android client, they open sourced that. I'm blanking on what it was two or three years ago. Uh, but yep. I, I think these companies should do that. I, I completely agree. Google is actually really good about it, right? They open source the App Inventor mm -hmm. for, for Android. They open source Wave. Like, they often don't shut. They didn't open source Reader, but yeah. that's because it had hooks into their crawl engine, right? But they're pretty good about it. I would have liked to have seen Yahoo do that with Astrid. I mean, it kind of begs the question, what are they going to do with the Astrid team? I mean, maybe the Astrid team is going to rebuild Astrid as a Yahoo branded to-do list app. I don't know if that was a talent acquisition. It's hard to say. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it was good on it was good for me because I got a lot of customers who said, I don't want this ever to ever happen to me again. Um, so thank you, yeah. uh, Yahoo. Totally. <laughs> but sorry about that, Dan. Um, I would uh, check out AnyDo if I were you. There you go. Some good suggestions for you, Dan. Hope that helps. Uh, let's take a quick break and thank another sponsor of today's episode, Atlassian. Makers of Stash. Now, we're in the middle of an exploding digital economy. 
Uh, it's driven by software. We talk about software all the time in this show. Nearly every company on the planet is becoming, in essence, a software company. Stash actually helps software teams take advantage of Git, the newest trend in development to write quality code quickly. Uh, provides a central place to create manage Git repositories hosted on your own servers. It's the place where all distributed content or code comes back together where you can find the latest official version of your project and keep track of code activity. Stash significantly reduces maintenance, gives IT administrators flexibility to control user management and permissions. Your servers, your rules. Stash supports your growing Git repositories within the safety of your own firewall. Uh, their traceability integration points actually allow teams to follow their code from development all the way through delivery in one system. And development isn't just about coding. Teams using Stash can quickly get a handle on which branches are affected by a particular bug and who's actually working on the fix. You know, it can be a struggle uh, to bring new technology trends to a large enterprise. Stash enables teams to embrace Git using existing environments and authentication with fine-grained permissions and code traceability uh, enterprise teams, all within the safety of your firewall. Enterprise code can be complicated, but administration is actually very simple with Stash. You create a project, add Git repositories, and assign permissions all in a matter of seconds. Avoid the overhead of managing Git for your team with an intuitive interface to add users and groups, create and manage code repositories, and a logical project structure. Stash fully integrates with Jira, uh, which we actually had on the show last week. Uh, understand what issues were fixed and what code changes fix those issues. You can track the pro progress of work being done on Jira issues as well. So here's what you can do. Go to Atlassian.com, A-T-L-A-S-S-I-A-N.com slash twit for more information on Stash. Monthly plans start at $10 per month for up to 10 users. But you can try it free for 30 days. Remember, Atlassian.com slash twit and select Stash. We thank Atlassian so much for their support of All About Android and Twit. Thank you, guys. All right, let's uh, move on to apps. Okay. I like the music for that section. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. I can't remember who wrote that particular song. When this show was in kind of its you know pre-release phase, uh, people were tuning into the beta episodes that we were posting, you know, that we were doing live and posting on YouTube. And fans made all the music pieces for this show. I think if you go to twit.tv slash AAA, there's a wiki in there that should <laughs> list who did what. Um, and I'll check and make sure that their names are there because I know I have them somewhere. They deserve credit because the music and drops are pretty great. Um, so thank you. Uh, let's see here. Google Maps. I think this is a long-awaited update. I feel like Maps in general, has been stuck in this gingerbread era kind of uh, UI yes. for the past couple of years. And I've been wondering, because it was such a marquee selling point for Android for the longest time. I wondered, like, why aren't you guys paying more attention to this? Well, we finally got the update to 7.0. I believe it's Ice Cream Sandwich and above has access to this update. I mean, there's just there's so much that changed here. Uh, so it's hard to, to list it all. But the entire interface is completely different. G Google's really kind of showing its its kind of uh, tendency right now in particular to simplify things a little bit and kind of pare it back and make a smoother looking delivery of their apps that maybe cause less confusion to the general user. Uh, in doing so, they end up removing some, pro some parts of the process that many people have grown to love. One thing that got the cutting room floor was latitude uh i don't know did yeah. anyone here use latitude on a semi-regular basis at all for anything I no we used to refer to it time. as latitude the service where i know where my friends were last december <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay that's fair. that's really that was, good fair enough um, I used it for very briefly, I think like December of 2011 or 2012, right yeah. after they launched it, like on a trip uh, to New York and then turned it off just because I, I wanted to see some of the stats. I mean, Leo used it pretty extensively. We talked about it on Twig quite a bit and he yeah. had this like amazing sort of personal stats. I mean, he had it checking him in automatically to places that he went. I don't love that checking me in automatically thing. Yeah. Um, I, I manually check in on Foursquare. I, there are some places that I'm happy to advertise that I am at and others that maybe not. Um, 
I, so it was a good product. They just didn't have the users. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I have to say, was I a wide, you know, all across the board latitude user, you know, with all my friends and everything? No, but my wife and I used it uh, all the time. We shared to each other, which is really handy because she works in San Francisco. I'm here in Petaluma. You know, like it's dinner time. Oh, is she stuck in traffic? It was so easy for me to just hop on a map and be like, oh, she's stuck in Nevada. Okay, it's probably going to be 20 minutes before she gets here. And she didn't have to do anything, you know, to alert me of that. Re really going to miss that because it came in handy but on both sides, you know, for her and for me. Um, but that's about the only thing. Like, I, I don't know. A lot of people are really lamenting the loss of latitude. Google was saying, well, you know, we're, we're integrating locations into Google+. Plus as kind of the alternate uh, to that. But but there it's a little bit, well, it's a lot more limited. You can share uh, based on circles. And it's just not a quite as, uh, it doesn't have quite the always on impact that Latitude seemed to have, so. Right, you, it sounds like you use Latitude like Find My Friends uh, on, on iOS, which I actually only used once when a friend of mine was, I was meeting a friend at the beach here in San Diego, and he was like, oh, just, you know, use, the, you know, find the, go after the blue pin or the red pin, which is uh, on iOS when I was using the iPhone last year. And I was like, oh, this is really handy. So it sounds like that's kind of how you were using Latitude, the real time, like, oh, where's my, where's my wife? She's the blue dot on the map. And that actually mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense, um, especially, you know, with, the, with, with your spouse or your kid. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. And, and so checking in on Google Plus is a completely different thing. Yeah, they're not the same. Yeah. They're not the same. They're not the same. Um, and it's interesting that Google announced Latitude going away, not in their sort of regular spring cleaning kind of posts, but in this Maps update. Um, I, I, you know, I applaud. I really like when, <laughs> when developers take away, or when companies, or when 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 products evolve to the point where they take away features that just weren't being used enough to, to streamline it. Um, it takes a lot of guts, and you and you risk alienating users, even if they're a small percentage of users. But I think it's important when you know. I think it's particularly with Google products, which which can tend to get a little bit bloated, like they start to have that Microsoft Word kind of feeling, like just mm -hmm. new little feature after new little feature. Um, um, I like to see things simplified and, you know, maybe Google plus, you know, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll change the location uh, service to be more like find my friends or, you know, the way that you were using latitude, who knows, uh, yeah. but that's actually going to impact your life. So you're not, you're so, so have you and your wife decided on a separate, I mean, there are lots of apps that do that. Are you going to use a different app or are you just not going to? Honestly, gonna, she, gonna she's been out on, yeah, she's been out on paternity leave the, or maternity, sorry, maternity leave the past three months. She right. goes back to work uh, tomorrow, <laughs> so uh, we'll figure something out. I'm sure if it, you know, if it's really, if it ends up being a, a huge deal. Um, but we haven't been in the situation where we've had to test it out yet. But I'm sure right. we'll figure out something. Uh, I have it up on my phone here just to show it off real quick. They've got the kind of always integrated search bar, which I think is really cool in Maps and everything. So you can just kind of enter in pizza. It gives you this kind of rotating. Uh, ah, I must have clicked it to type. Sorry. Uh, it gives you this rotating piece on the bottom that allows you to kind of swipe through your results and find them on the mapping page. And then, of course, you know, if I wanted to go there, uh, it's very easy to get more information, find the reviews. They're integrating a lot more into Maps, all of the other offerings, right? So navigation is here. It may have been there partially before, but it's definitely surfaced a lot easier now, uh, as well as their kind of places information. Uh, Zagat is is highly integrated now. You see a lot more of Zagat ratings, like this is Rosso, which is excellent pizza in Petaluma, by the way, but featured by Zagat, best child-friendly restaurants. Like they've got a lot of integration of their different kind of properties appearing in here, and it's just a lot cleaner. Um, I like what I'm seeing, uh, and I was using the navigation the other day to come from San Francisco to Petaluma, and I don't know, things seem a little bit smaller on it, so maybe it just takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, you know, versus the old version, but overall, I, I think they did a good job. I don't know. So, I mean, I was going to say for location sharing, and we were yeah. chatting about this in the in the chat room, is uh, Glimpse, G-L-Y-M-P-S-E. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of more ad hoc. I don't think you can do the permanent real time, but maybe they'll add this with latitude going away. That's a really good point. Maybe they, maybe that's a, a way for them to kind of bring in a bunch of new users to say, hey, maybe you want to you know create a, a small network of people that can always see what what you're doing. Obviously, that's a, that's a hit on your processor. But if you're using a service mm -hmm. like that, you're kind of saying that's okay. Um, and another another kind of tidbit about latitude was that was launched by Stephen Lee. 
at uh, years ago, and he's now the guy in charge of Google Glass. Oh, hmm. What yep. does that is interesting. Say about glass. <laughs> interesting. Hmm. And it's really not surprising that they removed the social yeah. features from Google Maps and put it into Google Plus. Although yeah. it really throws in the question, like, what are they going to do with Waze? Because Waze is Google Maps with social. And so <laughs> right. is it going to become Google Plus Waze? Is it Waze Plus? How are they going to handle that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, good are question. they really going to have them exist outside of each other when that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense either? Maybe maybe Waze was just purely a uh, a, a talent purchase, an aqua hire. Or a, or a talent block. Or, yes, mm -hmm. right. I've heard, yes, Defensive. exactly. Very, very good. Very well could be. Um, and then, Gina, there were there were a number of, of little, you don't need to read these all, whatever. <laughs> I just threw in a bunch because I was like, God, what else happened? In yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of like, Google app updates. Uh, so we got Chrome for Android, the stable version updated with built-in Google Translate. So if you visit uh, a page that's not in your native language, Google Translate will automatically prompt you to translate it. Uh, full screen support on tablets and also new user interface for right to left languages like Arabic, Farsi, and Hebrew. Uh, that's the stable version. Chrome beta for Android, for Android updated to version 29, which has WebRTC, which is a, a web platform that enables real-time voice and video communications. That's good, interesting news for Twit. I know that Twit has been kind of keeping an eye on the WebRTC progress. Uh, Chrome Beta has also got faster page loads and more. I've been using Chrome Beta on as my default browser on Android, and, and I really I like it a lot. Uh, the Google Plus Android app also updated with the option to see what your friends are plus wanting. Right. I'm Plusing. seeing more of those in my feed. Yeah. More of the, yeah. So this so -so this happened on the web, and now this is also showing up in yeah. the in the Android app. How are you? What do you think about it? How are you feeling about it, Jason? Do you like it, I'm, or have you turned it down? I I uh, my my initial reaction was I don't want people seeing what I plus one. Like it's just uh -huh. you know it hasn't been a consideration. So you know I saw somebody else in in the feed show how to turn it off, and I like my knee jerk reaction was okay. Well, I'm turning that off. No one wants to see what I plus one anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but. Then I've noticed over the past week, like some of the things that other people have plus one are actually kind of interesting. I'm like, oh, right. if I wouldn't have seen that otherwise, then I'm happy that it showed it to me. So I'm, I still feel like I'm firmly on the fence. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it like it like combines favorites and retweets yeah. in Twitter speak, uh, which is which is interesting. I mean, I plus one things because I I'm I'm trying to make a public gesture. Like, yes, I do like this, and I know my name and face kind of shows up next to that post, and mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. So I'm I'm actually okay with them getting broadcast. I don't I don't you know. I, I wouldn't plus one something right. uh, that I wanted to keep private, but totally. it is, it does feel like, oh, this isn't a reshare, but this kind of makes, well, plus one also a reshare, yeah. um, which, yeah, is, which is a little bit weird, right? Yeah. Because, you know, if I wanted to reshare, I would just do that. For me, it wasn't a matter of, I don't want people knowing what I plus one. It was just a matter of, I don't want to create noise for other people if, gotcha. if that was the case. Um, right. But, but like I said, I've seen plus ones, you know, plus one buys coming in my stream and they really haven't bothered me that much. Uh, you're seeing more of that in Google plus. I feel like, uh, things in your stream that aren't necessarily what you initially signed up for, but they're all related into the things. I just hope it doesn't get out of control. I feel like it's kind of borderline right now where the stream is half of what I expect to see and half of what I don't. And I'm wondering right. when, where the tipping point is there. That's mm -hmm. what, that's what, what I feared with this. I mean, they're going to have to, you know, play around with the same type of controls that Facebook has yeah. about how much data you want to see. They'll start to prioritize their friends. It can't just be chronological. Mm -hmm. And the plus ones become interesting when they start to aggregate them and show like, oh, a bunch of your friends showed the same thing. Sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, last little update, Audible, who's friends friends of, of, of Twit, uh, they've um, their Android app is updated with a new design, improved navigation, and uh, simplified player controls as well. So, so long Audible, overdue. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you're an Audible customer, yeah. Have you have you tried this new update? You, oh yeah, it's it? yeah, it's great. I, I think you know, from a functionality standpoint, it's just very similar to what you what you've already been getting. Um, but yes, I mean the the design the redesign. If anything, the notification icon being regular definition and not blurry <laughs> was just enough for me to be <laughs> yeah, okay with it. Yeah, it was enough. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, I use Audible all the time. I, I have a subscription and I listen to at least a book a month and I love it. And so it's nice when an app that you use that much gets a, such an obvious like 
full kind of redesign. I think it's great. My one recommendation would be their expanded notification is awesome. Include a closed program in there because Audible is one of the few programs that I have that you open it and the only way to get the notification to, to leave is to go into the app, into the menu, and then quit program. There aren't many apps <laughs> that do that nowadays. Audible is one of them. Just give me that in my quick notification link. Let yeah. me do that from yeah. there. But, uh, but otherwise, I, I love it. I think it's great. Cool. So good on you, Audible. Uh, and then finally, I, I thought I'd just give a little bit of a prop to, uh, to Facebook. I signed into their, signed up for their beta program about a month ago, whenever they kind of opened that up. I fully expected that absolutely nothing would happen because that's pretty much what we've gotten for months and months and months from Facebook on their Android app. And I'm pretty happy to say that they've actually done some pretty okay, th they, they've shown that they're, they're paying attention to it. And that gives me at least a little bit of hope. Um, the new beta version finally gets rid of these two dots that are always, it's just a legacy menu button that's been at the bottom of Facebook. The new beta gets rid of that. I've been wondering forever, like, why is that still there? Why do you, why don't you change that? Uh, you know, just silly things like being able to save a photo that you pull up from a stream to your device. That's another one that I'm like, how do you have a, an app like this and not allow people to save the pictures, the pretty pictures that they see? Now you can. Uh, so Facebook's doing some things right. They have a long way to go. I just thought I'd give them props because I think I've talked smack up about their app on the show quite a bit. So I like that. Fair and balanced. Yeah. I'm trying anyways. <laughs> there you go. All right, Gina, we got another email. What's what's this all about? We do. We have another email. Uh hi, AAA team. Got a quick comment question about how Google rolls out updates to their apps. Why can't they push the maps update already? It's been out since July 11th and I'm still waiting on it. Same thing happened with the new Gmail a few weeks back. Are they trying to manage their bandwidth? Also, if I sideload the update, will I get will it get future updates from the Play Store? Thanks, love the show since day one, and that's from Jr. Uh, so I don't really know. I, I don't really know, but my guess and speculation about the slow Google App Play Store rollouts uh, is that they're 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 just they're staggering it. I think partially maybe to manage their bandwidth. I'm sure they're doing it as well to kind of scale up their servers and see how they respond. I think that they're probably maybe doing it by device as well and watching their crash reports coming back to see if there are any major bugs maybe that they missed during testing. This is kind of what I I imagine uh, they're doing. I imagine that pushing these giant updates out to all the millions of bazillions of devices that have these apps installed all at once uh, would be could be kind of disastrous for them or just create you know a, a crappy user experience mm -hmm. um, but uh, as for the question about side loading and, and Jason you put this in the rundown and I and I agree I do not believe that that side loading should interfere with future up to dates through play I think that the only risk that you take when you side load an APK from somewhere first of all is we talked about this last week I mean you know in general just be really circumspect about where you're installing APKs from just to make sure that they're that they're uh, clean and that they, they haven't been tampered with. Yeah, uh, but also yeah. you're taking the risk that maybe that APK isn't optimized for your device, which the Play Store does for you automatically. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, so there is a risk there. But if you're finding the APK in a reputable place, if you trust the place where you're getting it, if you absolutely can't wait, it shouldn't interfere with the update from the Play Store if that APK is legit. But I got to tell you, just just wait. Just wait. It'll come. It'll come. Yeah, it'll <laughs> it's come. rolling out now. It'll come. Good things come um, to those who wait. But you know, yeah. if you if you're really impatient, side load. Just know where you're getting it from. Like, uh, you know, like Android Police, for example. They they have a link. I'll go ahead and include it in the notes. I think we had it. Did we have it in last week? No, we didn't because Maps was not a thing last week. But uh, anyways, I'm including it in the show notes at twit.tv slash AAA. Check it there. They have direct downloads for the APKs. What you say about um, serving up the pro the proper APK for your device is totally true as, as regards to this because it searches whether you have a tablet or whether you have a phone and it offers up a different APK, a different version of that APK based on those kinds of things and possibly other things. So even if you find an APK and you install it, if you're installing the wrong one, you might not get the desired results. So just keep that in mind. And also, you know, if, if a publication like a, a well-known site like The Verge, I don't think The Verge ever does this, but Android Police, Android Central, something like that that you trust that has a lot to lose by posting a circumspect APK a, to their yeah, page and advertising it. it, like they're probably not going to do that. So Android Police actually uploads their own version of that APK and I guarantee pretty much guarantee you enough eyes have checked it before it hit because if they ended up distributing something like that, uh, that was circumspect, somebody would find out about it quick and it's their reputation on the line in, in that case. So 
Uh, so really just scrutinize these things. Be careful where you're getting these things from and make sure you're getting them from a place that you actually do trust. And that can be held Indeed. responsible for it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So before we get into the arena, let's thank our final sponsor of today's episode, 99 Designs, connecting the world with great graphic designers and create fast, affordable graphic designs. Love 99 Designs and the whole process. Here's how it works. You tell them what you need. Dozens of designers from the community submit quality designs created just for you and your project. You give the designers your feedback, help them refine their designs, and then select and pay for the favorite, uh, for your favorite choice of all the options. They provide more than 200,000 graphic designers worldwide to work on your project, uh, world-class customer support, complimentary design consultations with the SF team for your branding needs, 100% money-back guarantee, and just a ton of categories uh, with which you can create projects around logo design, web design, uh, digital marketing collateral, print marketing collateral, apparel design for T-shirts, and all that kind of stuff, like like we've done at Twit, actually. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, mobile app design. For those of you who have a great idea but aren't design-inclined, 99designs can hook you up with people that are, and they can take your mobile app idea to the next level. We did use 99designs to commission... Twit logo designs. It showed off the the actual shirt last week. Didn't wear it this week. I forgot to. Uh, but <laughs> they, uh, you know, we we just had a ton of really great offer uh, options to choose from. And the one that we finally selected and everything, people have been really happy with it. It's just a different take on the Twit logo than we've done in the past, and it just looks great. Uh, it's very unique. So uh, the designers know their stuff, and that's why you turn to 99designs. You can start right now for as low as $199 for your own custom graphic design. Visit 99designs.com slash AAA. You can get a $99 power pack of services for free. A power pack actually gives you more designer time and attention. They'll bold, highlight, and feature your design project in the marketplace on 99designs, and you'll get nearly twice as many designs. You can also call 800-513-1678. That's designated for Twit listeners. That's 800-513-1678. I'll say it slow. 800-513-1678. Or you can just visit 99designs.com slash AAA in your web browser. That's a little bit easier, maybe. Uh, do that today. We thank 99designs for their continuing support of All About Android and the Twit Network. Thank you, guys. All right. Let's waste no further time and jump into the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. And the arena winner of last week would be, well, be Aaron Newcomb, actually. Aaron, Aaron. Aaron took it away with Meme Generator. Damn him. There we go. There we go. <laughs> meme Generator. Oh, it was so close. Capitalizing on the popularity of memes. He knew what he was doing. Ugh, kittens. <laughs> <laughs> and funny text and sometimes naughty text as well. Uh, it was a pretty awesome app. Yeah, it was a pretty awesome app. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I'm dead. That's yeah, it. I know, right? Don't you just love that in the arena? You're like, why do I even show off my app like, now? I know it's going to win. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because they're all great. That's why. Meme generator, 34%. Second place was floating notifications at 29%. Uh, Tweel, that was Ron's what the heck <laughs> is this app at 20%. And I came in a f in fourth place with Retroid. Yeah, so the retro game thing doesn't always work, um, but it's still Sometimes a fun game. Works. Not always. No. Sometimes I I'm, I'm surprised actually that Tweel bro bro beat broke that through. Out. Yeah, you, you never cool know how it's going to turn. And this is this is prime prime example of what happens during the live show doesn't necessarily happen in the end because I think during the live show, Retroid and Meme Generator, I think we're kind of battling it out in the very early parts, and mm -hmm. yes, it completely changed. So there you go. All right, well, did I learn my lesson? No, I didn't because I'm going to do another throwback game here, but that's only because I've been waiting for this for months when it was teased by Sega months ago that Crazy Taxi was coming to Android. This is a game that I think debuted on the Dreamcast. And uh, was that? Yeah, it was on. Oh, was it on GameCube before? Before? Oh, I see. That was a simultaneous thing. Okay. I played it Darn, on the Dreamcast. I had been hoping it was a uh, Uber competitor. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
<laughs> yes, I'm right. Really, I'm really disappointed to find out it was a game. They don't. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't wear uh, the pink mustaches. It's like pink beards. So I don't know. It's the thing that they do. Uh, I'm realizing I don't have the uh, the audio plug. I completely forgot about that. Kind of oh no worries. Audio. What would Crazy Taxi, the Uber competitor, look like? It would All be right. like Yeah, I'll just show yellow, it off here. Yellow, yellow cab shows up with crazy, <laughs> crazy driver, crazy hair. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so what is Crazy Taxi? Uh, crazy Taxi is an arcade style game. It was a GameCube Dreamcast back in the day. They've optimized Sega's optimized it for Android and for touchscreen. So ah, there we go. Now we've got the audio plug. Thank you, team. You guys are awesome. Good, because this game's just as fun for the uh, soundtrack here. I'll just enter into uh, original. Let's see here. I'll work for three minutes. Three crazy minutes. All right, three crazy minutes. Sorry. Correction. Okay, so it's a, it's your, you know, straightforward 3D driving game. I'll just select that guy. All right, let's get it on. All right, let's get it on. With a hot, hip 90s soundtrack, uh, <laughs> which you'll probably hear in a second. But you are a taxi driver. And the controls are pretty simple. Drive, reverse. Reverse also acts as, I've turned this down, it's really loud in my ear. Um, acts as, as kind of a break. So you want to find people to get fares. I'm going to see if I'm any good at this game while I talk. Nice. So somebody gets in, right? Now I just follow the green arrow and I have to deliver them. If I deliver them fast and without <laughs> running into people, I get more tips. Um, you know, it's just silly arcade driving fun. And it's actually a pretty pretty awesome port of the game they really kind of designed it uh, around the android experience so you can opt to either play it with a touch screen uh, like i am now or you can play it to where you know you move the screen and, and you uh, are able to drive that way as well but you know you drive around it's all in 3d and it's just a lot of fun it just reminded me of the old dreamcast version and and everything and i think sega did a great job it is a little pricey it's five dollars but I don't think that's a bad thing when you're buying high quality games. It's just kind of the price you pay. I think we get so used to paying one to two dollars for games, but this is like, you know, this is very a game very similar to what you'd get on a console. And I'm obviously very bad at playing this while talking, but uh, <laughs> it looks really fun. I'd pay five bucks for this. I don't think five bucks is too crazy. Yeah. Coming from I, the, coming from a developer, yeah. I think we should get used to paying a little bit more, especially for something yep. like this. It's such an immersive experience on a tablet. It's really nice. Yeah, it is nice, and it you know. I don't know. If you ever played it before, it takes you back. If not, you can experience it yourself. And I'm I'm not going to make it to my destination. I can already see because I'm having a hard time playing it at a slam. But uh, <laughs> but there you go. And I just missed my turn off. Anyways, it's Crazy Taxi. It's a lot of fun. If you ever played it before, I guarantee you're going to love this version of it. Uh, by Sega. I love that Sega's doing this. I wish I wish we'd see this more. Uh, th that some of the more old school gaming. Oh whoa! What is that? Check this out, Chad. So this, apparently, those, this was reviewed on Before You Buy, right? Ooh. This would only work though if I had it set up for the motion, and I don't. But anyways, this is a this is a steering wheel. I might be playing with this later. <laughs> so you hop it in there, and then oh my oh, gosh, sweet, sweet. I have something to do later. Like I didn't have something to do later already. There we go, crazy taxi. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> I know it's crazy. There we go. All right, Brady, uh, pull us out of this out of this crazy land and into our next app, and I'll try and show it off on, on my phone. I have it installed. All right. So I've been going to Shenzhen a lot, and over there, text messages are expensive. And what I learned is that everyone over there uses WeChat, which is kind of like WhatsApp, except you can share photos, stickers. Like, there are a lot of fun kind of crazy caps in there that you can share. And so when I'm over there, it's what I use to message with people back home and my colleagues. And what I've since learned is there's 650 million users on WeChat, but very few in the US. So I just kind of wanted to share that, that little tidbit. And there's other things that I find over there, not to confuse things, but like open rice is don't have the it open table or slash Yelp oh. of Hong Kong and Beijing. Uh, there's a bunch of other little apps like that. Unfortunately, no Lyft competitors just yet though. Soon. <laughs> Soon, yeah. It's, oh, yeah when I visited China, it was it's difficult to figure out like, how people did stuff. Yeah, that that little bunny guy right there, man. He he's he's all over the place. 
So that's him throwing stars. It's an animated GIF. But you can share your location. You can share picture, take pictures. You know, you can see all those little icons down there. Uh, yeah, video chat. You can do real-time voice chat through it. That QR code is how you become friends or join a kind of party chat. Yeah, the install keeps failing on my phone. There's something weird going on with my device right now. Big surprise. So uh, sorry about that. I can't show it off live and in real time. But so how many people are using WeChat in, what did you say in China right now? It's something, uh, users worldwide is something like 650 million. Wow. It wow. Is, it's huge. It's huge. It kind of blows me away how these how these chat services are so kind of siphoned off from each other, but they're so mm. impressive in and of themselves. Like to have that many installs and then you don't really hear about that much in the States. Like, wouldn't that be an even bigger network or <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of like the Skype, WhatsApp, Hangouts yeah. of China, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah basically. Very cool. But, so but it's, is it only Android? Does everybody have to have the Android app installed? Uh, no, it's definitely iOS as well. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure what other platforms it's on. Is there web, uh, or this is, this is for folks no. collaborating That's on the phone? That's the thing that I don't like about a lot of these, um, apps is, you know, I'm, I'm at, in front of my computer a lot of the time and I'd love to be able to just text back. I'm happy to have the same kind of constrained, uh, you know, entry, entry, uh, character limit just so I'd be able to not have to pick up my phone and type on that. Right. Yeah, that's what I. That's why I really like Hangouts a lot, and why I like Google Voice mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, I send, I text from Google Voice, you know, in yep. the browser so much, right? Because I'm often at my desk. Um, but uh, yeah, that 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 looks. It looks really cool. So, do you use it while you're also in the states uh, to 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 chat with folks over in China, or is it kind of like depends on where you're at? It's kind of like a trailing thing. So when I when I'm over in China, I'm chatting a lot with my colleagues there, and then with my friends here in America. Then when I get back, my friends and I in the U.S. will keep using it and then slowly we'll forget and just use texting. <laughs> right. I, you know what I mean? We just kind of, just kind of fades away. Yeah. And I don't really, I don't really text much with my, my Chinese colleagues except when I'm over there. Right, right. Right, right. We mostly use Skype actually to communicate mm -hmm. uh, when I'm in the U.S. Interesting. So that is, uh, and that is free, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> WeChat, one word. Um, so we have Crazy Taxi. We have WeChat. What do you have, Gina? Actually, I know what you have because I actually do have this installed. Sorry about that, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I dug deep into the archives. I've been writing about this site. I think I started writing about the site in like 2006. Uh, but it still, still works and I still use it. And the Android app is really good. My pick this week is Retail Me Not. Retail Me Not, uh, it's a coupon site. It's basically, I've always thought about it as kind of like the Wikipedia of coupon sites because uh, users submit coupons, uh, coupon codes to online stores. And, and now in the Android app, they support kind of real brick and mortar shops. Um, and users report back, you know, was this coupon successful? Was it not? And you basically just, you know, you tap the button, you say, get coupon and you pop it in. Uh, so I was buying something for, I think it was for my daughter. It was on a kid's clothing store. And I always, you know, you get to that checkout part and it says like enter coupon code here. Whenever I see that, I go to retail me not on the web. Oh, okay. Say, hey, you know, uh, here's this URL. Are there any coupon codes? And I try, and I, I usually try out a couple of them and I've saved a ton of money by doing that. So the Android app, as you can see, Jason showing off now, is optimized the tablet, works for the phone and, it, and it's got brick and mortar uh, coupons as well. So if you, if you allow the app to see your location, it will list out malls which are near you, and then you can tap on a mall, and it will scan and say, here are all the coupons and sales going on at these stores uh, near you. And there's personalization, too. You can save coupons. It'll alert you. It will alert you if a coupon that you've saved is about to expire. Uh, it's got categories of coupons. You can go through and say, I need clothes. I need electronics. Uh, you can see coupons that are popular now. This site has been around forever. Like I said, these are the folks that made Bug Me Not, which I'm not even sure if that's around anymore. That was like a shared user website login site. Um, but uh, but it's been around forever. There's hundreds of thousands of coupons, hundreds of thousands of users. And so you can kind of see, uh, you know, what, what are the coupons that are working, you know, they're working for people that people are using. You can share coupons uh, with friends. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty great app. I, I'll tell you, I only have exclusively used Retail Me Not to shop online. But now that I've got the app, 
on my phone. Um, in theory, if I'm walking past a store at the mall, which I, I rarely go to, but when I do go to, I kind of want to get in and out as soon as possible. It will alert me if there's a if there's a coupon or if there's a deal going on. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's a good app. It's a good coupon app. Um, and uh, it'll save you money if you take taking a little extra time to to check out if there's anything going on there. Uh, and it's free. Retail me not. Nice. And it looks like it's not just coupons, but it's also kind of like, like I just discovered, you go to New Egg and you click through and it's like, well, it's not a coupon. It's actually just a sale. If you didn't know right, that the sale. sale was happening. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just sales that are going on or coupon codes. Awesome. Um, and with coupon codes, it'll, you know, sometimes it'll say like 50% success rate. You know, some coupons have expired or they only work for return users or they only work for certain things that you're buying. So you can see, you know, the rating there to see, oh, is this coupon, you know, what's the likelihood that this coupon is going to work? Uh, and, you know, they don't always work, but when they do, it's just like score, you know, it's just like you just found a little, <laughs> mm -hmm. a little, a little goal. It's, it's a get to save a little money. So, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of excited. I, I'm glad that Retail Me Not's still around. And uh, I got, when I mean, you have it on your phone, you could save a little, little extra cash when you go shopping next time. Anytime <laughs> I, I find a coupon code that actually works, I feel I, I feel like, Woot. yeah, like how, how do I put it? I almost feel like gypped had I not found it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, wow, I almost paid that. Like, and I yeah. had no reason to. Like, that was, it was close. I was almost gypped. Uh, so, hey, you, you won't save if you don't find find those coupons in the first place. So this is a great way to find it. And, it, you know, there's so many different coupon places online, but a lot of them are just kind of like spam, spammy and, yeah. and weird to search through and everything. So this looks like a, a great, easy way to do that. Yeah, it's like the the old school dig slash Wikipedia, I feel like, of, of coupon sites where, yeah. where users submit and approve and, and let you know whether or not they work. So And that works really well. Right, right. Awesome. So uh, three very different apps today, uh, Crazy Taxi, WeChat, and Retail Me Not. Uh, check that out and let us know which is your favorite app this week. AAAPoll.com slash 118. Today's episode is 118. So AAAPoll.com slash 118. Let us know which is your favorite app in the arena this week. Early reports are in showing Crazy Taxi uh, in in the lead right now. But like I said, uh, this, this all changes. The, the early reports are rarely ever accurate in the long term. So we'll see. We only have 19 votes at this point. This could crazy all Taxi change. is pretty awesome, I gotta say. It's, <laughs> crazy Taxi is pretty awesome. If you've ever played it before, it's it's pretty awesome to finally have it on Android because I guarantee you I'm going to waste a lot of time playing that. Uh, I, I just <laughs> love racing games, and then to have that racing game, yeah, it's going to steal a lot of my time. Uh, sorry, tech news today. I'm, I'm going to be playing uh, Crazy Taxi instead. Sorry. <laughs> uh, there you go. All right. So uh, next week, Ron is joining us once again. I don't have a, a guest booked right now. Maybe it'll just be the three of us, uh, but no matter at all, because it'd be good to have Ron back in the saddle. Uh, but for this week, Brady, it's just been a pleasure having you back. It's always great having you on the show. Uh, love to get your insight and everything. Thanks for Thanks for stopping by with us again. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to be here. Absolutely. Uh, this is your opportunity to tell people what you want them to know, what you're doing, where they can find your work, all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I'm now doing this hardware incubator in San Francisco. We're looking for companies. And, you know, Android is a huge part of this ecosystem. It hopefully is basically enabling a new breed of hardware company that's almost as easy as doing software. So if you've got a hardware idea, let me know about it. Awesome. And how, and where, where can they find you uh, to do that? Uh, I'm Brady on Twitter. Okay, excellent. But basically, this is funded by PCH, which manages very, very large supply chains over in Shenzhen. And it's about taking some of their engineers and giving back to startups. Awesome. That sounds exciting. Um, very cool. Yeah, very cool stuff. Uh, Cool. Well, I wish you the best of luck with Highway1.io. Sounds great. Thanks. And uh, obviously, we'll be in touch. Love to get you back on the show uh, once again in the future. And yeah, those guys are all the some of the some of the startups that we work with right now. Oh, neat. And this this is what I was telling you about in January, Gina. Yes, I remember. <laughs> I remember when you were on the verge. Yes, this is yes. very cool. I'm so glad that it worked out. It looks amazing. Thanks. And I'm I'm jealous that you get to travel to China so much. It must be so interesting. I'll be there in two weeks, yeah. Excellent. You'll be there in two weeks. We chatting it up. Yeah, I will, I will. With, <laughs> most of my colleagues are Irish over there, so uh, 
that's who you were seeing on that page. Excellent. <laughs> All right, so nice. that uh, so he, Brady on Twitter and Highway One IO if you want to check out the website mm -hmm. and find out more about what they're doing uh, over there. Uh, thank you again, Gina. What you got going on? You can see everything I'm go that's going on with me at ginatrapani.org. Uh, I work on an open source app called ThinkUp, thinkup.com. You can check it out. I've also got an Android app I mentioned earlier, to do text.com, to do txt.com. And uh, I host another show on the network, Twit Network, this week in Google, which is on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, you should come check us out. We'll probably talk about, definitely we'll talk about the Play Store and some other Android stuff tomorrow during tomorrow's episode. And I also do a show on the 5x5 network called In Beta, with Kevin Purdy, who has been a guest here on All About Android before, uh, and uh, we sometimes talk about Android. We talk about a, a lot of a, a lot of stuff, but that's uh, that's on tomorrow morning as well at six a.m. Pacific. It's going to be an early morning, and that's it. That is early. I've, it is early. I mean, that's that's early, particularly if you don't already have kids, because you're probably getting up sometime <laughs> around that. But that's early for being smart, especially. <laughs> it so. is. It is. I'm sometimes less articulate than maybe <laughs> I, I could be. But yeah, ever since my daughter was born, it's like 6 a.m. I'm on yeah. my second cup of tea. Yeah. You know, oh, no totally. big deal. <laughs> totally. I'm eating lunch at 6 a.m. Totally. I'm on second <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> uh, Chad, what do you have going on? Uh, your friendly video switcher over here. I'm not going to do crazy stuff that I did last week. Um, I do a show on the network uh, all about uh, my Minecraft, so you can go check that out, OMG Craft, and uh, another show all about YouTube, This Week in YouTube with Lamar Wilson, uh, so go check that stuff out. I think I think you should have gone with All About YouTube. All About YouTube? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, we, missed, we missed a really good... You know, we, we have the This Week Ends covered. Yeah. There's enough of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, all about YouTube, it would be, it, it always shows up at the front. Like if you're alphabetical, yeah. yeah I know. Really, it, it'd be t this number two after all about Android. I, I, I have to say that was not purely intentional, but it was a nice thing to discover yeah. after the fact. I was like, wow, <laughs> it's always you, up at the top. That's great. You totally planned that. Come on. <laughs> oh, totally. Maybe Eileen did because we came up with the name together. Other, so maybe that was in her thinking, but it totally wasn't in mine. Uh, but it's nice. Uh, cool stuff, Chad. Thank you. You always do a great show, a uh, great job switching the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, and uh, you can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell or at Twitter. I'm at Jason Howell there as well. Thank you for watching and for the people that are in the live chat room. Uh, always participating you guys we just really appreciate you guys coming back week after week and being so passionate and excited about the show we love delivering the show to people that that enjoy android as much as we do uh, but that is it for this week uh leave us a voicemail get your voice on the show 347 show aaa you can also email us or get your face on the show if you record a video upload it to a place like youtube and send us the link at aaa at twit.tv find the show on twitter we're at android show we're on google plus uh, all about Android there. Show notes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA as well as past episodes there, iTunes, YouTube, all over the map. And finally, you can catch us live every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About YouTube. I mean, Android. <laughs> <laughs>